I just want to move on, just to uh, get back to this elderly. We're going to sort of, if I could just summarize, triplet therapy, transplant still has a role, everybody's getting land maintenance, many people are adding bortezomib, and, and some of the newer drugs are being explored in clinical trials in the maintenance setting. In elderly patients, we haven't really dug into what we're doing there. So, um, Saga, what are you doing in an elderly patient today? Yeah, so I think the first thing to say in terms of elderly patients is I define those patients more by frailty than I do Absolutely. by age. So patients that are not able to tolerate a standard RVD-based induction or a transplant are the patients that I consider frail. Um, and so for those patients, my standard currently is probably lenalidomide and dexamethasone, uh, but there certainly is emerging data suggesting the antibodies may change that equation a little bit. And the antibodies being elotuzumab and daratumumab. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the goals of therapy are probably the same for the elderly, but the pace at which you get there is probably going to be different. Uh, mm. Are you doing anything different in your elderly patients? I mean, I think two, two points to make. Number one is I think we're still not very good at assessing our elderly patient. We need to do a better job of defining frailty. And for example, the British have a nice trial, the fitness trial, trying to codify that and, and figure out sort of response adapted therapy. Do you give everyone one size fits all and then adjust for toxicity? Or do you modify early on? And some of it based on frailty right. scoring and indexes. So we need to, one, make our, our assessment of frailty better, mm. but also easier to do so that we'll actually do it. What do you do? That's why I asked you, though. Uh, so, I mean, I think we do the look test still. We do have no, some... I don't mean for frailty. How do you treat you? 82-year-old lady comes in. How do you treat her? Well, Just... I live in Southern California, so an 82-year-old is actually... There's a couple of them in my spin class, so they do quite <laughs> well. Um, but, I mean, Great. so we do do yeah. a geriatric assessment, and for those who truly are frail, we will do Lendex, I think. Yeah. It's very. So I was quite work. taken with the VRD light protocol mm. that uh, mm. Nupur Raj developed at Mass General, mm. and I've been using that a lot. Paul, what, what do you do? Yeah, no, I, I want to acknowledge especially actually Jacob, uh, my partner, Jacob Laubach, who was actually the, uh, the co-PI with Betsy O'Donnell on that study. And RVD Light we developed as in a partnership with Nupa with exactly the goal of what we could do uh, um, to minimize toxicity. So it's basically a three week on, one week off schedule, 15 milligrams of lenalidomide, and then the bortezomib is given weekly subcutaneously. And Jacob and Betsy have demonstrated this very high response rate. It's basically 85% okay. ORR over overall, um, and excellent tolerability in sad, patients sad. What about um, mm. the other proteasome inhibitors yeah. in the elderly? What about Xazimib and Carfilzimib? Yeah. Is there any role for those in newly diagnosed elderly patients? I think data is limited, but is Xazimib could easily be used in place of uh, yes. Xazimib. Yeah, um, so yeah. it could be, you know, it, and, and you know, Xalendex, dose attenuated regimen for elderly patients where you want to use uh, of the PIMM backbone. Yes, and we, we uh, with Shadji Kumar, ran a trial of exasomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone, and I was impressed with the tolerability, and, and it takes a little bit longer to get to where you want to be, but mm. you do get there in the end, I think. Is that other people's experience yes. as well?